this week. You were crazy. You were playing your championship in week 18. We are here for you. And because of that, you drink free today. Fantasy managers in week 18, of yeah. course, drink free. And you're probably going to need it because there's a lot to figure out with who's playing, who might be playing a little, who might be playing a lot. And uh, before we get to all of that, we'll do our classic keep it open or close it out at the happy hour bar here uh, with Tua, Derrick Henry, Jordan Addison. We'll go through keep eating good with players like Jordan Love and Jaden Reed on the Packers. And we'll close this thing out with a couple sides and totals that we like early in the week. Even if you're not playing in fantasy, of course, you could still bet on the games. And with that, let's jump into the Roto World player news. For all your player news, go to NBCSports.com. Here are the notable injuries we're tracking with games that matter, games that have something to play for. Obviously, Christian McCaffrey, he's already been ruled out on Monday, so he doesn't make this list. But Trevor Lawrence and Tua Tungabailoa dealing with shoulder injuries. Tua sounds obviously much more promising and more pain tolerance. Devontae Smith with that ankle. T. Higgins with the hamstring injury as well. He left the game in the second quarter against the Chiefs, but he did return in the second half. Devontae Smith is not considered to be major either. Jalen Waddell with the ankle. Waddell is expected to be back for the playoffs, but you most likely will not have him this week. Jaden Reed with a chest injury. Noah Brown with a back injury. Raheem Moster with that knee. A lot of rest for Moster this season this time of the week, but he didn't play last week, which seemed to be a surprise to just about everybody. Alvin Kamara with the ankle. Sam Laporta with a knee injury as well. And getting back to Kamara, we got to hear from his head coach, Dennis Allen, basically where he's at going into a pivotal game for the Saints season. Take a listen. Yeah, so he, he sprained his ankle. Um, I think it was on the sideline over there right before, yeah, in the first half, right before the, uh, the end of the half uh, when he got tackled on their sideline over there. Um, you know, kind of came in, got it looked at, came out after half to try to test it out and, and uh, look, just didn't feel like he was going to be able to be functional, uh, you know, enough to, to help us win. Do you know that it was not a high ankle sprain then since he was I don't know that. I know it's an ankle sprain. I haven't really gotten into all the details as to what it is. Obviously, a significant news here around Kamara J. It's not just in fantasy with Kamara for those playing this week, but this game that on the slate does mean something this week. Yeah, it does. Uh, I love, we've talked about this before, the changing definition over the years of high ankle sprain. I actually have a high ankle sprain right now, but it's so low that it's not even a sprain anymore. I'm just perfectly healthy. It's fine. Uh, it could be whatever you want. Yes, exactly. Uh, so I guess that Kamara is a chance to play, given that he hasn't been fully ruled out. But no, this is a huge game for the Saints by beating the Bucks last week. They kept their hopes alive of winning the NFC South. Uh, I don't know what happened in this game, honestly. Jawan Johnson was running around like 2009 Antonio Gates, uh, and Derek Carr was fantastic. But by doing that, if they beat the Falcons and the Bucks lose to the Panthers in Carolina, then the Saints are your NFC South champion. And you might think, oh, the Bucks, they'll take care of business as a two and a half point favorite. Uh, sorry, it's a five and a half point favorite over Carolina against the two and 14 Panthers. But I mean, they're only five and a half point favorites, which means right. Carolina are like a 30% chance to win that game. It's not like the Bucks are great. So uh, there's still plenty on the line for New Orleans. So you'd expect that if Kamara can go, he will. Yeah, and it's definitely a need in this game because the Falcons, they have not looked great lately, but they did beat the Saints uh, about a month ago. So, you know, you know you could beat them. And if you slip up, especially being only three point favorites, the Saints, uh, you'll need everything you can get in and out of a Kamara who still has has 1,400 yards from scrimmage despite being, uh, despite missing the earlier part of the season, those three games. So uh, having him in that, having him in that game against Atlanta, who is kind of just kind of limping, the Falcons still have a chance yeah. to get in the playoffs. Right. So, so they'll be playing, they'll be playing hard, whether it be with injured Taylor Heineke, Desmond Ritter, you're going to get the same production out of them anyway. But regardless, they're coming to play too because they have an outside shot. And like you said, Jay, it's not like – like this is the NFL. It's not like the Panthers are going to just come in and roll over for the Bucks. So if you're the Saints, you got – like this – it any team in the NFC South right now besides the Panthers, your playoffs start in Week 18. Yeah, and it would be fitting if the, pa if the Falcons did win the division. Oh it feels as an 8-9 and sub-500 champ. That feels like the poetic ending to this division, which has not been fantastic um, this season. The, the Buccaneers last year 
uh, All right, nine. one at uh, at 89 with uh with uh Tom Brady. So you know the Bucks could end up doing the same thing here. But like like I said, the Falcons they they hanging on by a little thread. But you know they're playing this like this is a playoff game. The whole NFC South. So for the Saints, you want to have Alvin Kamara. You want to have him ready to go. As we show the NFC playoff picture here, as you guys have highlighted, that division is basically just the ultimate any given Sunday at this point. Any of those teams could beat any of them, including Carolina, who it's been obviously a brutal year, especially for their young number one overall pick, Bryce Young. But he has had some moments down the stretch. And it's just funny looking at this, Lawrence, seeing that, I mean, there's a world where we have an 8-9 and nine division winner and even the last wild card team could be hanging around at 8-9. and nine. Yeah, and we just, the Bears just got eliminated. Imagine if they would have been able to, uh, to sneak in there. You know, it just goes to show, especially like you get it to, you see the Packers there holding on to that seven seed. It's a, it's a fine line between these records. You'll see a team like the Packers who are sitting there, you know, with one win better than an NFC South team, but we don't look at it that way. We look at the Packers as much better uh, than a team like the Saints or the Falcons, but one of those NFC South teams could be in, and if the Packers slip up, they could be out. Jay, what is it like on a bookmaker's side of a week like this where, sure, there's games like Dolphins-Bills that literally mean everything. The winner of that wins the AFC East. But the reality is there's a handful of games that there's both teams really with nothing to play for. Look at Jets-Patriots draft status. And then you look at some games where one team could be resting players, but you don't know how much versus another team that you don't know what they'll do. Uh, it's such a volatile situation across the board, but there still has to be lines and totals and props and everything like that. Yeah, no, it's absolute chaos. It's the worst day of the season for a bookmaker, uh, the final uh, Sunday of the NFL season, where you just you just don't know what a team's, uh, what they're going to do with just the amount of playing time. And there's famous examples of Sean McDermott in a meaningless week 18. He played Josh Allen for one quarter, but then pull him. And so can you even yeah. go up with Josh Allen props at that point? Like, are you going to list Josh Allen's passing yards at 88? and a half like yeah, it's just yeah. bizarre now i will say it's a better this is almost the best weekend of the season because you can study this stuff there's so much stuff around that just breaks the model like say in that example uh of josh allen being just playing the first quarter like you could bet bill's first quarter money line into right. dolphins to win the full game or whatever and that's going to break the model of what a bookmaker uh typically models that out as also there's a lot of stuff in week 18 to around player incentives for instance, like DeAndre Hopkins has contract incentives where if he gets, I can't remember what the exact number is, but it's like 50 yards and five receptions, he'll get a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, if Chris Jones, if Chris Jones gets a half sack, I think he'll get a million dollars. Like, I think these guys are going to go out of their way to do oh, that yeah. in a way that skews what a, the normal performance would be. So uh, it's a fun week from a betting perspective, but very chaotic. And, and to your point on that, Jay, you spoke about, you know, get it like taking a Josh Allen first quarter type of bet. Sometimes these coaches, sometimes they won't and sometimes they will let you know how much a player, a star player is expected to play. They might let you know from a DFS standpoint, too, you could kind of come up as well. Um, you're looking at the Steelers and Ravens game right here, right? The Steelers are minus three and a half. We, like, if Lamar was playing this game, we know that wouldn't be the line. But take advantage of a quarterback like Tyler Huntley, who could be cheap, and then you just, and then when you sit and think about it, you're like, Tyler Huntley's a backup quarterback who played in a playoff game versus Mason Rudolph, who's yep. a backup quarterback. This game is even. So if you're playing DFS, you could take that a quarterback like Tyler Huntley or maybe Sam Darnold, who might play some, um, and then you just load up on guys from that Buffalo Bills and Miami Dolphins game, and that's how you kind of uh, uh, match it up there. So in DFS, there are some advantages to it. Yep. From a betting perspective, too, one of the most interesting things about this Week 18 is Puka Nakua. Because Puka Nakua is, I believe, four receptions and 29 receiving yards away from baking, breaking both of those rookie records, which have stood for 50-plus years. And so there's stuff that's just going to be skewed because the Rams don't have a great deal to play for in this game. So them feeding Puka early just has to be way more in play than your normal game. Like Puka to cap make a, have a reception on this given drive. That kind of stuff, I think, is something that is a product of Week 18. All right, well, let's take a look at the AFC playoff picture as well. Lawrence brought up Steelers-Ravens as one of the 
uh, pivotal ones at the top here. Not for the Ravens, who, as you said, they'll be they'll be playing Tyler Huntley, which you could do much worse as a backup quarterback there. This playoff picture looks a lot different here, Lawrence. More wins. Yeah. The division winners all will finish with winning records. And the fact is the wild card teams, the same could be said for them. Besides it being set one through seven, Ravens, Dolphins, Chiefs, Jacksonville, Cleveland, Buffalo, and the Colts, we still have the Texans who played the Colts and the Steelers who played the Ravens, some backups in the hunt as well. It's quite amazing. You look at this AFC North that could possibly have three teams in the division with Joe Burrow being, I'm sorry, three teams from the division in the playoffs with Joe Burrow being hurt. That shows you the strength of that there and just the AFC as a whole, like you say, uh, all winning records um, and a lot of, you know, a lot of, you know, guys who weren't starting quarterbacks at the beginning of the year. So it just goes to show you um, it's it's a team game and it'll be interesting to me to see how the how the um, how the Ravens approach this. Um, you don't want to let a division opponent get into the playoffs. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how off, how long they'll play the starters if at all, because the Steelers have, they've looked their best so far with Mason Rudolph at quarterback. And then, of course, Joe, you have a game like Colts-Houston where, you know, we'll see how that plays out Saturday and how that could have a trickle effect maybe to a team like Jacksonville on Sunday. So there's also things to watch within a 24-hour window as well. Yeah, definitely. And I think another thing to remember for Week 18 is that particularly for games like Indianapolis-Houston, for both of those teams, that's win or go home. They may not mm -hmm. win the division, but they're guaranteed a playoff spot with the win, and they're guaranteed their season over with the loss, is that if guys can go, if there is any way for them to go, they will play. Like, the line moved, uh, it flipped from Colts minus one and a half to Houston minus one yesterday. I think mainly off the Colts injury report with uh, Ryan Kelly, Quentin Nelson, and Braden Smith were all, I think Smith was limited, the other two didn't practice at all. Those three, they all finish the game against the Raiders. And if you finish the game and it's a do-or-die playoff game the next week, you're generally going to play. So all these guys are going to go all out this week. That game's almost a pick em too. You still yep. like the Texans there? I lean Texans just because, uh, look, this is reductive, but CJ Stroud got an right. issue. Right. Uh, right. And I think that Stroud... What, I, as soon as he got back secondary. in the game, they was backfiring off right. on all yeah. cylinders. So you like to see that. Yeah, and I'm a little worried about Minshew. Even if I think those guys will play, Kelly, Nelson, Smith, like they might be banged up against the Houston D-line that is getting uh, a little bit healthier with Will Anderson back, who uh, has made a big move in Defensive Rookie of the Year overnight. And I just worry that Gardner Minshew, like, he needs a good offensive line. You don't want Gardner Minshew in chaos. You want him with a perfect context. Yeah. As much as the man loves to seemingly play in chaos yes. sometimes, yes. It's He's for a better guy. or yeah, for yeah, worse. great chaos yeah. merchant. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and Rotorworld.com. And I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched. Or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.